Chapter 6, Encounter in the Tower. As they crossed between the two large ponds again, nothing attacked them this time. Breathing a sigh of relief, they walked up to the, to the gate entrance. The gate was open and had been badly damaged. It hung awkwardly in the air. The road crossed over a moat. Where once there was a drawbridge that allowed easy access over the moat, now there were just several wooden planks that had been laid across. It all looked solid enough, so the party carefully walked across. To the left stood a tower that had seen better days. As they walked past the battered gate, they stepped into a large open area. Ahead to their right was a series of steps that led to a pair of double doors, which was clearly the main entrance. One of the doors was closed. The other was partially opened, as it too looked badly damaged. The door to the tower on their left was gone, and Belfin and Phileas walked over to investigate it, with everyone else following. As they were about to step inside, Lightmane's hand came down on their shoulders, stopping them. Shh! Back up, he whispered. Belfin, also whispering. What? What's going on? Lightmane, look up in the tower. Fortunately for them, Lightmane looked up just before they stepped inside. About 20 feet up was a creature that they couldn't believe existed. A giant spider sat motionless in a bed of webs. Belfin and Phileas were distracted by all the coins they saw scattered all over the floor, along with a ton of debris that they didn't even think to look up. They all whispered to each other. Lightmane, I'm guessing that thing is just waiting for something to walk inside so it can pounce on them and eat them. Belfin, oh my god, first giant frogs and now a giant spider? What kind of crazy place is this? So glad you saw it before we stepped inside, but now what do we do? Phileas, missiles and spells, I say. I have a sling. Maybe throw a dagger, fire arrows, and cast magic missile. Latia, look at the size of that spider. How about we just go up those stairs and go inside? Lightmane, and risk running into it later? What if it comes inside and attacks us? I think Phil is right. Let's attack it now while we have while we have a shot to kill it before it can bite us and poison us and we die. Shinfia, poison? Die? Lightmane, it's a spider, so I'm guessing it has venom. Last thing I want to see is one of us die from spider poison, but I don't think we should just leave it. Latia, I think we should. Spiders only move when something touches their webs, right? I doubt it'll come inside or go inside the moat house. I doubt it'll come outside or go inside the moat house. Phileas, but look at all those copper and silver coins all over the floor. We could really use that money. Lightmane, I also see three, I also th see three gold coins and one platinum coin. Latia, okay, change of plans. We attack. Everyone looked at Latia, somewhat surprisingly. Latia, what? Hey, we're adventurers. Risk is part of the job, and that's a decent amount of treasure. Let's do this. Nightwind, fine, but I'm in front. If it drops down and charges us, I'll fight it with my hammer and shield. Us dwarves have a high tolerance for poison. Teneth, I'm sure my protection from evil spell won't work, since I doubt it's an evil spider, so I'll just be ready with my mace and to cast cure light wounds if needed. Shinfia, I'll be next to Teneth with my staff. No way I'm attacking that thing with my fists. <clears throat> they stood just outside the entrance. Latia cast her earth bow spell, and then everyone who could attacked. Latia fired her arrow as her earth bow also fired. Belfin threw a dagger. Phileas fired his sling. Jack and Lightmane cast magic missile. The damage was severe, and the giant spider let out a horrifying screech and dropped to the floor with great speed. As blood splattered off its legs and body, it charged. Jack, oh God, it's still alive. The spider tried to bite Nightwind, who blocked it with his shield as his hammer came down, but the damage wasn't much. Lightmane moved up next to the dwarf and swung his sword, but again, the damage wasn't much. Nightwind, what are you doing? Back off, you fool! I've got this! It's almost dead! Nightwind dropped his shield and grabbed his battle axe as Latia had her earth bow rise up to get a better angle so that it could fire without risking hitting anyone else. The arrow fired, but appeared to do no damage, seeming to glance off it. As Nightwind tried to swing his axe, 
The spider bit him, and he fell. Several screamed, including Lightmane, who instinctively reached to help his fallen comrade, Latia. Lightmane, no! But it was too late. The spider bit him, too, and he fell, motionless. Nightwind was still conscious, but wasn't moving. Tenneth and Shinfia ran up and swung their weapons, while Latia dropped down and immediately pulled out her herbs, hoping to stop or at least slow any poison that might have gotten into their system. Both Latia and Tenneth had skills in herbalism. It was the other reason they were willing to take this risk, but now she was deeply regretting it as she cursed silently to herself. Shinfia damaged the spider with her staff, and Phileas somehow managed to maneuver where he could hit it with his burning hand spell without risk to the others. And with that, the spider collapsed and was dead. Nightwind, I'm okay, he said weakly. Latia, no, you're not. You don't look well, but Lightmane isn't conscious. Come on, Lightmane, wake up. Tenneth cast his two Cure Light Wound spells on both of them, while Latia administered her herbs as best she could. This was her first time dealing with someone who was most likely poisoned, so she was pretty much winging it, doing the best she could, as Tenneth tried doing the same with Nightwind. Tenneth, you're weak, but at least you're conscious. Let's hope Lightmane regains consciousness soon. Nightwind, you fool, he said to Lightmane. Why did you do that? Tenneth, because he was trying to help you kill the giant spider before it bit you, that's why. How about you just relax and stop with the anger and let me keep examining you? I need to, ca- I need to get a slow poison spell for both of you, but it's going to take a while. By the way, why did you drop your shield and grab your battle axe? Nightwind, to do more damage, obviously. Had I hit it, it would have died. Just then, a light source lit up from inside the tower, and everyone turned to see what it was. Belfin had just lit a torch and was looking around. Jack, hey, what are you doing? What if there's more creatures in here? Belfin, there aren't. I looked. Now I'm collecting coins and looking around. Torchlight makes it much easier. Why don't you come over here and help me? Jack cautiously stepped inside, looking every which way, scared at what might pop out at any moment. Belfin, Jack, there are no other creatures in here. No big ones, anyway. Jack, oh, I feel so much better now. Thanks, he said sarcastically. Latia, he's still unconscious, but at least he's alive. But he's definitely poisoned. Just look at his complexion. He's turning green. Tenneth, Nightwind is poisoned too, but not nearly as bad. He should live. Latia, I wish I could say the same for Lightmane. Now what do we do? Go back to our camp in the trees? Nightwind, we can rest here in the tower. It's a filthy mess, but it's probably just as safe here as outside, for I'm guessing anything that's here knows about this spider and avoids this place. Latia, and if a creature comes walking in? Shinfia, we fight it. What else? Who will stand guard with me? Belfin, I will. Here's some good news. Jack and I just collected 29 copper, 19 silver, four gold coins, two platinum coins, and a small ivory box that looks like it could be valuable. Tenneth, wow, that's a lot of money. The gold and platinum alone equals 140 silver. That's more than any of us had when we started out. If we keep finding coins like this, Nightwind, you'll be wearing your dwarven plate mail sooner than you think. Nightwind, we're not there yet. We're also not going to spend all of our treasure on me. We divvy it up evenly. When I have 400 silver, then I'll buy my dwarven plate mail, but not until then. Phileas, spoken like a true dwarf, he said, smiling. Nightwind, you don't need to cast slow poison on me. I'll be fine. Tenneth, yes, I do, and no, you're not. The poison is still in your system, and the spell and the spell will greatly diminish it for a while, buying us time until we acquire the means to neutralize it. Latia. Neutralized poison is a spell that you and I don't have the means to cast yet, and paying for it is going to cost some money. So I'm glad we've found some, but if all that we found goes to neutralize the poison, then what was the point of risking being poisoned to get coins? Do you see the problem? Tenneth, was it not you who changed your mind the moment you heard gold and platinum coins? Tia, yes, and now I realize that was stupid. Let's just rest and hope they get better. Nightwind got better, but Lightmane didn't. But Tenneth still cast his slow poison spells on both of them, just in case. Nightwind, I'm telling you I'm fine. Tenneth, and I'm telling you you're not. The poison is almost certainly still in your system. 
Lightmane. What's going on? Everyone immediately gathered around Lightmane, but Shinfia kept a lookout. Nightwind. I'll tell you what's going on. You almost died, you foolish elf. Lightmane. Still your typical cheery self, I see. I need some food and water. Lightmane's head was throbbing, as was his stomach, but it wasn't just because he was hungry. The spider venom had weakened him greatly, and he was clearly still too sick to move. Latia, I know you guys don't want to hear this, but I think we've got to go back to Duran and hope that someone can heal him. He's not in good shape. Tenneth, he can't walk. What are we going to do, carry him all the way back to town? That's over a day's travel. Nightwind, I'll carry him. Tenneth, oh, would you just stop? You aren't going to carry anyone. You couldn't carry Belfin or Phileas right now. Nightwind, oh, yes, I can. Nightwind walked over to the halfling and picked him up. Belfin, hey, what the heck? Immediately, the dwarf's knees buckled, and he dropped to a knee and put Belfin down. Nightwind, okay, you're right. I can't. Never mind. Tenneth, now stop with the I'm fine stuff and listen to your cleric, he said with a smile. Latia, handing them both some of her herbs. Here, both of you eat this. It will help a little bit. Drink some water too, please. Tenneth, honeymead might be good right now. Latia, oh, good idea. Does anyone have any? Jack, I'm pretty sure several of us have a honey have, have a honeymead skin to go with our water skin. Shinfia, don't you mean wine skin? Jack, looking a little confused. Yes, but it's honeymead. Shin just rolled her eyes. Latia, what a strange and bizarre world we live in. We knew there were giants in the world, but giant frogs and now giant spiders? What else does Forestera have in store for us? Belfin, well, that's another reason we're adventuring. To find out. The party decided to try to rest until morning, and then, based on how Lightmane was doing, determine if they'd keep exploring the moat house, if he could walk, or carry him and head back to Duran. Bale. What are you doing? Sheila. I'm making a copy of my, ma of my map of the world. Bale looked at the map. It doesn't have all of the ocean on it. You cut it off all around. Why? Sheila. Because a little mystery is better than no mystery at all. Many people are afraid to travel too far across the ocean, lest they fall off the edge. No reason to show them that that's actually the case. Bale. Mystery? Everyone knows the world is flat. Why not include all of the ocean, so anyone who looks at this will see the edge? Sheila. I literally just explained why. To keep the mystery of it all. They don't know for a fact that it's flat. They just all naturally assume it is. And it is, but that's not the point. Besides, it shows the islands in the four corners and all the rest of the land. That's all that's necessary. Bale seemed a little confused, so he tried his best to lighten the mood. So, craft project? Sheila, ha, cute, but no. I'm going to give it to an elf above. Bale, you're giving a map of Forestera to an elf? Sheila, yep. Bale, why? Sheila, cuz. Bale, cuz why? Sheila, rolling her eyes. Do you just enjoy being annoying? Bale, no, but I do like understanding things. Why they're done, which is why I ask questions. Kinda like you. Sheila, well, yes, but I'm so much more fun when I inquire than you are. Bale, ignoring her insult. So why are you giving it to an elf? Sheila, come with me and you'll see. Bale, so you're just going to walk up to an elf and Sheila. No, silly, I'm going to disguise myself, obviously, and I'll just make you look like a dog. Sheila started casting a spell. Bale, no, wait, bark, 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 looking at Sheila. Grrr. Sheila, oh, relax, you'll be fine. Besides, now you can see what it feels like to be an actual dog. Bale pointed to his mouth and acted like he was talking. Sheila sighed and cast another spell. Sheila. What? Bale. So all this time you could have made me look like myself? So why haven't you? Sheila. Are you seriously asking that silly question? Obviously the spell isn't permanent or I would have done that immediately. Obviously, she said, shaking her head to herself. Come on, let's go. And immediately Bale could only bark again. 
Sheila appeared as an old human woman, and the next thing Bale knew, they were on a road in a forest, and several elves were traveling towards them. Sheila hailed them and asked one of them to approach her. The other elves were quite surprised when their companion just walked up to her and said, Hello, old woman, how may I assist you? Oh, what a nice dog you have, and he reached down to pet it. Bale looked up at Sheila and rolled his eyes. Sheila stared back at him glaringly, and immediately his tongue came out and he acted friendly, and the elf pet him. Sheila, hello back to you, kind sir. I have a gift for you. Yesterday, a mysterious person came to me and gave me this and told me that tomorrow I would run into an elf on the road and that I was to give it to you. He said to tell you that this is a map of the entire world of Forestera and that if you take it into town, you can sell it in a shop and you'll get 12 silver pieces for it. Now, I don't know why anyone would pay all that money for a map, but that's what he told me. So here you are. The elf looked quite surprised. A map of the entire world? How is that possible? He unrolled the map. It was, a, it was beautiful looking. It was the most beautiful map he'd ever seen. He was quite stunned, but he had no clue how this could actually be a map of the entire world, for to create such a map would involve traveling everywhere in the world, and still, how could one draw it accurately? To this elf, this was not possible. Elf, is this really a map of Forestera? Sheila, the person who gave it to me said it was, and that you'll get 12 silver pieces for it if you take it to a shop in the village you're traveling to. Elf, well, thank you very much, dear woman. I shall attempt to do so. Twelve silver pieces would really come in handy right about now, so thank you again. Sheila, well, you are most welcome, Sonny. The elf looked quizzically at the old woman, having just been called Sonny by her, but he said nothing, and instead turned and rejoined his companions. Bale, now able to talk again. Well, that was thrilling, he said sarcastically. Sheila, well, I don't know about you, but I had fun. Bale, so you want people to see what the world looks like. Why exactly? Sheila, to generate interest and mystery, she said rather melodramatically. Don't you know that all the world's a stage? Bale, no. Where did you hear that? Sheila, I didn't. I just made it up. But I kind of like it. All the world's a stage. Ooh, and we are merely players. Oh, I like this. I have to write this down. Bale, well, while you're writing that down, can you turn me into a half-elf for a little bit? Sheila, I would, but it would just depress you more when you turned back. Bale, sign. You're right. Okay, let's go. And we're back. And I'm a part dog thing again. Oh, joy. Sheila smiled and looked around. 